of an underground house back in college. We talked about that. But back then, we, didn't, we weren't living in the country. Here we were in the Bay Area, Berkeley, San Francisco. We began to think of, well, how can we live this kind of monastic rhythm? Oh, you know, I, I scare them up out of the same tree um, really frequently. It's a, it's a couple of doves, Sherry. Yeah, they, they, I, I don't know, do doves have a monastic thing? We valued things monastic, even though we never joined a religious order or anything like that. This was, oh, the chickens are all in here. So this okay. was the milking room to our dairy barn up to two weeks ago. I mean, the 60s kind of would have called it a counter culture, but I, I like the word alternative better than counter. So that's, that's my use appropriate technology sign. When we moved here, we came with our washer and dryer, and then as washer and dryers happen, they broke. Uh -huh. And so I decided that I wanted to try something different, even though people said I would never like it, but I have since learned that I actually do very much. And if you come on the other side, okay. you'll see what I have named this. It is my pleasure washer. I've taken great pleasure in just washing by hand. It is not for everyone, but for me, it is an appropriate technology, and I use a lot of soaking so that it's, I don't, the scrub boards are here for art. I hardly ever use them. Monasteries throughout history have said, hey, there are some people that seem to be invited to live on less. To not have income the way that other people normally have jobs and, you know, all of those sorts of things, but to live a kind of a focused life. Intentional is a, is a word we use a lot. One thing you'll notice around here if you're going to do things by hand, Use almost crank everything house. cranks. So this cranks around, and it, you put apples in here, and then the crank is going to bind them up, and then you press the juice out, and then it'll pour out eventually into a pot that you sit under here. So cider press. Oh, yeah. We use it whenever we have a surplus of apples. Sometimes you get more apples than you can keep, and that's the easiest way to get through a lot of apples before they go bad. In fact, before you go, we have some goat ice cream we can oh, share yeah. with you. With yeah, the kids. kids would love it too. That's also cranked. Pretty much everything you do by hand is cranked. <laughs> so if the power goes out... We can keep cranking. <laughs> exactly. Uh, That's right. Just, Certain yes. things will be just fine. <laughs> exactly. Well, we came here. This place, it was in pretty bad shape. It just had the trailer and it was a real mess meaning it sold fairly cheaply. But when we first moved here, we bought the land and then they, uh, the mobile was sitting there and we, and we said, well, what are you going to do with that mobile on the property? And so we don't know because it's improperly established. Well, we'd sell it for $5,000. So the house that we've been living in for about 15, 18 years, we bought for $5,000. That's yeah. where our children we, grew we up. We lived here and then built this. Evan quarried a good deal of the stone, particularly the lighter stone, is from around here on the hills. The really dark stones are frequently from up on the plateaus. <laughs> This is the goat barn, which we used to decide how to build the house. So we tried basic board. That's fast and easy. And then we tried pressed rammed earth, which is part adobe concrete regular earth that you put in a device and then you ram it down. You'd open this mm -hmm. and you'd put in 
Portland cement and um, adobe. That's that adobe pile. I can't remember what else was it, Sherry? Was there lime? And so that goes in, and then you, then you slam. You know, this comes up and over, and then you slam it down and creates a brick. And this is this is the rammed earth. Yep, exactly. Those create rammed earth bricks. Silver ram. Wow, where'd you buy this? We got it from a friend, and this was sitting out in his field. And so he got it, and then when he heard we were trying to play with this, he said, hey, why don't you try this? So he just gave it to us. And then it didn't work. The bricks weren't very good, and I got a hernia. So let's find some other methods. <laughs> you can see how that's really disintegrated, and we've had to build it up with rocks. I'm glad we didn't pick that technology. That okay, was It's, it's a testing okay. process, right? You just exactly. try something, yeah. doesn't work, you improve it. Actually, we talk a lot about experimenting, only the word we use is play. You keep editing as we keep doing. Yeah. We have thought about building straw bale or cob. Underground was another option, but as you see, we're on a rock face. This whole shelf is a rock face. We did build on the rock. Yeah, so ultimately what it really meant was straw bale or cob, they wouldn't accept the codes. So we had, we had restrictions. Okay. And so structurally the rock really ended up and we could do it. We could pick up rocks, but we could handle that. This front used to be the front door to the trailer right here. So it's quite long, right? It's yeah, 40 it's a, feet long. Yeah, it's 40. So it's it's not that small. It's, it's a very reasonable place yeah. to live. Yeah. So you raised two kids here. Correct. Correct. It's, it's a double wide. It's a double wide. Yeah. So this is the bathroom. Oh yeah, okay. This is a typical mobile home bathroom. But what we did was we came and added on a, this little corner and in the little corner, we put a stump hollowed out and this, and in there, it says a compost toilet. It looks conventional, actually. It does look, and isn't that nice? And, but you do, you do your thing, and then you add mulch, and that's, that's the compost process. Every so often you take it out and empty it, uh, and it becomes part of the earth, if you know what I mean. If I do know what you mean. <laughs> The, the kitchen was here and the wood stove we cooked on was here and the rest of the kitchen was over where expected. There was a sink and this yeah. was a pantry. <laughs> so this used to be the living room and this used to be the dining room of the mobile. And so when we were able to build that, then we finally had a place because our books were just everywhere in chicken coops. Denver is the closest city with a university library, and Denver is 300 some miles and across mountains. So I mean, the you know the idea is appropriate technology. I had to buy books. So now you're connected to your house. Yes, this doorway was a Valentine's gift. <laughs> Our building inspector allowed us to cut a hole so we could access the building better. The door, it's something getting onto 100 years old. The door was actually bigger. We had to cut it to fit through this little hole. This is the great room that we are. It's a work of art in progress, as you see. So you see it still has a subfloor, and there is local aspen on the roof, that, but we don't have the trim up. And the beams are one that were, were cut up on the plateau. They were gigantic trees, as you can imagine. You're really doing this then. I, yeah, we, uh, we got a crane for that. Yeah, and we then, did get a crane for And that. Gerard and Weston, oh, Weston came and helped us helped with the framing of the, the roof. Our building constructor, had we known what we were doing when he designed it, we ended up with what he thought was one of the longest single beams in Western Colorado. Single span oh, beams. Yeah. yeah, we really didn't know what we were doing when we designed this and so but so there you there's designed a, it yourselves we yes. did we got an architect to uh, approve what we did did we know what we were doing no we're really hackers at this sort of yeah. thing and we just <laughs> fly you know we have ideas and dreams but we fly by the seat of our pants most everything that, uh, that we've done we never did before 
and the fireplace we made is a Rumford fireplace. The back is slanted, so it actually throws the heat out into the room. So rather than sucking heat out of the room, this fireplace actually heats a room, and it was designed by Count Rumford um, yeah, back, I think, in the 1700s. And also the air coming into the fireplace comes from here. Uh, so that's a vent that comes from outside into here. And so rather than sucking the air out of the room, it sucks cold air from the outside to produce hot air in the inside. And then there's a smoke shelf. Sure, you know. Yeah, it's a very smoke thin shelf. smoke shelf. It's only about four inches. That's a little tiny slot that all that goes up. I just followed the directions on the design, this little old thing that we found in a library and I, it had all the specs on the things so I just followed the specs and the first time we lit a fire and the smoke went up the chimney wow <laughs> we were so happy <laughs> we this was a tremendous <laughs> amount of work and we were waiting for the smoke to just come pouring yeah. into the room but it didn't This is going to be like a colonial oven. This will turn into an oven when I get around to it with doors that we can do fire in there. It's a little pipe to let the air And the same out. thing here, obviously. And that I only have the rocks up to here. I haven't finished. This is the grid to hold rocks on. Like everything in the house is just a work in progress. Yeah. So you wanted one big open room. Yes. We called it a great room. What we wanted was to be able to eat and, sh and talk and then be, have more of a formal thing. We actually sleep in here too, that's our bed. This rolls over out of the way as you see like that and then it turns into a bed because why not sleep in the best room of the house, right? And I haven't even sewed this up yet. I just fact just finished that this morning. No. These are Aspen from the ranch and this is also Aspen. Did you have someone mill that? Yeah, all of the ceiling is all local Aspen the same person who helped us cut the beams, he milled all of this for us. So it's a two-sided couch. Yeah, it's just a two-sided couch. And it's working fairly well. Yeah. I mean, we're just, th this is plan B. The first one I <laughs> edited and said, everything you keep editing. This works, that doesn't work. I like the fact that it's the whole structure is mobile also, so you could oh, eventually right. place it somewhere else. Oh, yeah. And we move it around a lot. That We've tried to lead everything so we can sh shift it around, which we do a lot, so we can have bigger gatherings in there. Even the windows are also unique. Because we've wow. just got them all from salvage yards and yard sales. That's great. So did you then put the install the windows? Oh, yeah. Yes. Do we know what we're doing? No. You get books, you read directions, you ask questions. This is a good wood stove designed by the Amish, and what's particularly good about it is the firebox is large. Most wood stoves have little tiny fireboxes, but this is big enough to heat the room, as well as you've got an oven on it like that. It feels like a conventional stove, except It for works. This is what we cook on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with a huge flue. Yeah. So it probably perhaps heat room. Yeah, it does. Yeah, the flue itself, it radiates heat. I just noticed now that oh, yeah. uh, you have here a little... Oh, yeah, well, we call it our Kiva. Yeah, so you lift it up and there's a, it's a storage room down there. A Kiva is the, the, the traditional it's building. It's an underground traditional, but all it is is it's storage. It's probably cooler down here. Yeah, so the house is set on a hill, so it's only one foot above the ground there, and it's three feet above the ground here, or more than that. So you have to offset all of that when we built the foundation. And it created this crawl space storage space. Why this little yeah. opening for yeah. apple here oh. in between? Uh, oh, that's our Alice in Wonderland door. <sighs> yeah, I've just gotten it plugged up so that no critters decide to come in. So there you go. So that goes into uh, the greenhouse, which is just barely alive now, although the tomato looks really nice. Originally, when the two buildings were, when, you know, we butted one against the others, this was the only access into this room for a while. It was everybody climbing through our Alice in the Wonderland door. So that was before we built this, as we couldn't build that until the inspector allowed us to. 
You know what's fun about yeah. this? This is where a bear climbed the tree. And of course, the aspen scar anytime you use it. Here's another one. So these are the kind of marks that a black bear made when it was climbing up the tree. Oh, wow. Those are just fun handles. Deer drop them every year, so you just have to be in the right spot to pick them up. I have a number of them to pick from, so I was okay. able to get okay. ones that, that look like, okay, those kind of go together. So there's various more books, of course, more music, music, books. music books and more exercise things. Why have a boring handle when you could have something fun. Yeah, I mean, all of this, I think all of that comes from the ranch. The bulk of it does. They're Just all, all antiques. Just old metal and things. The stuff uh, we, I made those. You made the Evan made the drawers, oh, yeah. and then yeah. that's... Oh, wow. Oh, and Sherry wow. made the pottery. Yeah. So great. Everything's significant. Get out some stuff. It's goat milk ice cream. If you want to try some. They make it themselves. They churn it. They had goats. They had goats? We did up to two weeks ago for the last 25 years. And I just put them up, uh, adopted them out to my goat breeder. So we've got ice cream for a while. But there you go. Wow. Goat milk ice cream that we hand crank like everything else around here. This is just a hand mill. We got very inexpensive in Y2K. Remember Y2K when everybody bought the hand stuff and then panicked? And then the next two years later, they sold it really cheap. So that's when we got it. So this is just wheat berries. So this is pretty contemplative work. You can go faster or slower. You can read while you do it if you want to. Uh, but for me, this is an appropriate technology for getting our grain. It is significant because I do bake all of our bread. I have leftover sourdough from yesterday that's just left over. That was great. So that's your starter. <laughs> yeah, that's some sourdough. This starter actually, came from the Bay Area. I feel like that our bodies are made to work and use, so I don't need an engine to do this. But this is, however, not appropriate technology for everyone, but it is for me. And it gives your body a chance to move and work, which is good. It's interesting that in the contemporary world, we just called it fitness and yes. just took the meaning out from it because it's not utilitarian anymore. I have so thought that why don't gyms install these so that when you're done, you can also take home your bag of grain with you. Why do we have extreme sports these days when you could be cutting down beams like this and trimming them or if you want extreme sports you know just build a house like this you know <laughs> this is brand new these are rings so like that or you know whatever you want to do so 65 so i mean the idea is that these really help keep you in shape and they're just like here and it's a lot of fun for people you can do these sorts of things it's exercise, but it's play exercise. No, Instead of productive fitness, it's just play fitness. <laughs> you can swing, handstand, roll. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Play. In monasteries, your geography and your rhythm. Oh, look at that. There's a connection between the two. <laughs> In a monastery, you have what's called the refectory, which is your dining room. That's this. That's what you have there. In the six room, you could go look here with all different. In a monastery, you have your sanctuary or your cell. And I, I built a dugout in the earth, and that's the cell. So every morning you come out here as part of your daily rhythm. Yep. You know, you think that spiritual life and these sorts of things, that it's the big views from the top of the mountain, and they're nice. But monks for centuries have been in little cells. And some of that is that it clears every distraction away from you in a way that all of that natural beauty can't draw me away. 
So there's an inner kind of presence that's very strong there that you can't get from being in those gorgeous sceneries. So you just wanted to get underground. You're finally, you have your underground house. Yeah, exactly. Well, what it was is that I was walking around here. I was on a walk out on the property. And then I saw this row of rocks here. This one, this one, all of this rock here are original. Only as you can see, they were on the ground up there. And then I looked and I also saw this row coming down here and it comes down the hill. And when I looked at it, I said, oh, that's kind of like the shape of a fort. And so I said, hey, I loved forts when I was a little kid. Why don't we turn this into a fort? I then began to dig down and pile up. You can see the ground level is here and the ground level is here. And so I had to dig this and I had to build up. I don't know, I don't know, six years it took. Just puttering. Wow. But just puttering. This is hard digging. You have to pick the whole thing out. And um, what tools do you use to do the work? Something like this. And you just swing it at the like that. Um, well only you have bigger tools too. I don't have my big pick okay. here. And did uh, you worry about it collapsing? I mean, that's why Sherry was wondering. Sherry didn't like me sitting in here with some of the of these rocks. She didn't want to fall on my head. Okay. So we did put some did. concrete up to protect the head. And then over the years, we just created the cell. Only I didn't know it was a cell until I was doing research on Palestinian monasticism and discovered that a lot of the monks in the fourth century, they had cells and I realized this is almost identical in shape and size to some of the Palestinian cells. And I said, oh, that's it. This is my cell and this is where I'm gonna do my life of prayer. Yeah, I, I can see how you may feel here in your place. It's very introspective because you almost see uh, the shape of the rock as you go down. You know, you are reflecting on, on the mountain and at the same time you have it embraces me. And we'll put a book out here. And um, this becomes my place of prayer each day. And for you, prayer is? But prayer is speaking and listening and the space in between. Sometimes I need to speak. Sometimes I sit and listen. And sometimes when you sit quietly, it's really about the space in between. And I, I have this um, for just a little bit. You, you need a break sometimes, a physically move. So you uh, go there to? Do a little bit of calisthenics. Ah. <clears throat> just to keep myself moving. And, you know, back in, uh, in, in the day, earlier, I called it my injury prevention program. So I would <laughs> come here. And I would do push-ups, you know, like this, uh, you know, that kind of a thing. And that's, or jumping jacks, you know. <laughs> Just enough to keep me moving. It also, early in the morning, your brain can get tired. In Buddhist meditation discussions, they talk about scattering and fading. So you have to pay attention to what your brain is doing. And if your brain is fading, then come on, do some movement. Get yourself going and you can come back and be clear-headed. This space so, is great. It's so cool. It's so hot outside and it's... That was another thing about this location. Once I started building it, I realized this was the coolest place on our property. And um, in winter... It's, it's also about 5 or 10 degrees warmer in the winter. It's just the sheer thermal mass of the place. And some of the earth cooling, just getting the temperature of the earth when you're underground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't have to light this unless, if it's 10 degrees and below, then I light the fire. Yeah. But it, it, with this room is okay, especially if with my robe, the robe that Sherry okay. made. One of the earliest monasteries ever was a guy named Antony of Egypt. And Antony is a famous hermit. 
And so we decided to sew that onto my chair so that now when I'm in here, I am in solidarity with the hermits in Egypt, if you know what I mean. Certain patterns of how we discover truth, those dynamics are the same or similar throughout history. One of the things that we wanted to make sure was that in both in terms of keeping warm and in terms of just preserving, not having weather damage and things like that, was to make a live roof. And so we covered it with plastics and things like that. And then dirt. I think part of the value of the roof with it live and the earth being on it, it just blends into the landscape mm -hmm. a lot better. Mm -hmm. So, and you were talking, Nick, about how we feel in spaces. That is the space of all spaces where I am most me. You know, little chapels and things like that. For some reason, that's the space for me. So in terms of monastic rhythm, one of the pieces of rhythm is manual labor. And the shop is the center of manual labor. So what you have, all shops need a good workbench. This is the kind of workbench that they had at the turn of the century so that you can take your plane and you can work on the workbench. So, so what you do, I like messing with old tools. You nuance this. And that is how people made chair legs and things like that. So this would be the base of a small chair leg. So you feel like these tools are appropriate technology for you? Ye for, 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 no. for some things, yes. For others, no. In, in this container, I have some power tools. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I have always dreamed of making things with early tools. And it's a lot of fun. And, and I actually like the, the drawers. The drawers were made with hand tools. But other things, like for cutting plywood, plywood was not made for hand tools. So you've got to have a skill saw if you're going to cut plywood. Again, the question is appropriate technology. These are really time consuming, but they're fun. So, and and they, you actually can create some very beautiful things with hand tools. So you relish <coughs> that you're working on your own home. It's not just a practical thing. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, in fact, is Sherry uh, has been doing some research on play lately and the importance of play. And, uh, there's a Bay Area person who wrote a book called Rest. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's about how mo you're more productive when you rest appropriately. But he talked about rest with a pretty wide range, you know, so that play was rest and, you know, different things like that. And Sherry and I were talking about how do we play? And frankly, building things, it's my play. So this draw knife, and it's actually quite reflective. Some of my research happens when I'm using a draw knife. It's already in, but let's find out. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah. yeah. When I am just simply going over this, and it's a mindful task, not a mindless task. See how that is? Oh, yeah. And so here we'll give you a little, there's the beater. And then these lift up various threads. So that's going to lift it up. So that'll change the warp so that when you send your 
yarn through, it's going to send it through in different patterns. Yeah. yeah so. And so your foot is those are changing the. Right. These are changing these. I don't know. So is there a connection in between meaningful manual work and uh, spiritual work? Yeah, partly that's what our bodies are for, is working and doing things. For me, some of my most contemplative moments are doing simple manual work. And frankly, building things is my play. You you must have heard of Wendell Berry. And at Wendell Berry's what are people for? It's not very soft, so you have to actually is this idea of meaningful labor that's not just the dr drudgery of work. I mean he really speaks against this notion, this modern notion that we need labor saving devices and that work is something bad you try to avoid. Uh, no, work is part of life. And the rhythm of doing all this is very productive, actually. It looks like it took a long time to make. Uh, it takes about 45 minutes of cranking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We usually like to watch a movie while we do it. Just a little bit of drops and watch out or else you'll be drinking pepper. 